Hello, hello. I hope you haven't completely forgotten me. I was away, I apologize, but now I'm back and I wanted to show you something in regards to Open SCAD. Because I mean, yeah, you all know, I wrote a book on Open SCAD, but the really interesting question is something else. There are many, many tutorials which show Open SCAD on synthetic parts, but so far very few show real components. And as you see here, this is my auction hall 3D printer and it was missing a few parts which the previous owner managed to lose and uh, which I then had to reproduce. In particular here the spool holder for this spool and the filament guide. And in the following steps I will show you how it all goes together and also I will show you the thinking and the working inside the Open SCAD app. Let us start out by focusing on this part, the spool holder. It essentially, its role is simple. Spool comes, sits on top of here, and then the printer can consume the material on the spool. So, we basically, here there is a screw and there is another screw here behind. Other than that, there is not so much to see around here. When it comes to reverse engineering such things, I always like to use a caliperium because it makes measuring very simple. And here we first get ourselves the diameter of the holes. Like this, you see, we get like 2.11 millimeters. It's a bit shitty if we would measure the screw, we would get a better result, but that's not so important. And then in the next step, we measure the outside to the outside. It's a bit difficult because the printer is in the case, but you see, we want the outside and the outside because this is easier than if we would try to hit the middle of the hole. Because now we've got this space plus two diameters. So if we want to know from the middle to the middle, we simply take this value here, which we got here, and then we subtract from it one of the lengths. Because this might have been a little bit unclear, I want to demonstrate it once again. Here we've got the two holes and each of the holes has a diameter of D. And the space we actually want is from the middle of the two holes, because in open SCAD this and this is the center of gravity which decides where the object gets pushed. And so the trick was, first we measured this, and now we measure this. And then you see we get Li plus 2D. And so the target value we want is the measured value. I'm gonna call it M minus D. And then M minus D is this target value. Well, well, this is the finished object which we are going to print. And now let's start out by building it. Essentially, there are many different ways to skin the cat. I usually grab myself two large solids, such as these two cylinders here. You see, the one cylinder, height 12, and the other cylinder, height 88. Nice trick. Put this in front and ask for a rendering. And you see, all of its children's appear red. So, now we've got these two parts. The next thing which I usually think about is we need a few holes. And the holes, normally I also start them as a positive form. You see here, I've got the two cylinders, cylinder one and cylinder two. And then I translate them to their individual positions. So you see we've got here the main cylinder and here the two screw holes. Incidentally, with uh, Open SCAD, many of the Primitiva you can select if you want to put them in the center or not. And here I put the gravitational center in the middle, so I simply only need to subtract minus 20.88 to fit the desired position.
And yes, here at the bottom I have a 4 mm overshoot just to make the geometry processing simpler. And now it's time to introduce a difference operator. The difference operator essentially takes two sets of geometry and subtracts them from one another. And here we see it's not quite right because always the first bit of geometry is taken as positive and the rest is taken as negative. So to solve this problem, we need to say that these two are together. So we add a union and we see we have the part almost finished. Now what we still need is the snout on the top. For this I always do some housekeeping. First here you see I put another union here just to make it easier. Incidentally the white space is not significant. You see you can do it like this. You can also do it like this or you can even do it like this and it always still keeps rendering so nobody cares but I like this layout the most. And now for the top, usually I just take all of this, I dump it either into a text editor or into an additional tab. You see I make myself a new tab and I dump it there. And then I start out once again. For the tab, I take a cylinder, you see this? And then I need a cube because I only want half of it. So I introduce this cube. And now you see we have the cylinder and the cube. And so the solution is, of course, another difference operator. And you see, we've got this. Here there's an error in the preview rendering. So we order a finalized rendering and we see it looks pretty good. And then we, of course, need to move it to its final destination. You see here, that's for moving it. And now it's flying around here in the air. And then we take back the original code. And we just put it on the bottom and we see if we order a rendering, it's almost perfect. And you see these corners, they are somewhat jacked. So this to end it, we say $fn64. Now the rendering takes a little bit longer, but you will see the results are much smoother. And then we click here the STL button, we save the STL, and then this job is done. Well, I know I'm not properly shaved and I look like a ghost, but please buy this book. I know you want it. Thank you. Before we go to the next part, I still want to show a small detail, namely this here. You see here, now I've disabled the translate operator. And now you see that the middle of this hole is in the middle. It's at the zero, zero, zero point. So this makes using the values which we got from the caliperium significantly easier. And yes, you see here they are. And then it's time to look at part number two, this guy here, where you see it also mounts to the printer with two screws. And then in actual operation, the filament will be fed through from the bottom to the top. And then on top, there will be a Teflon tube up here which then leads the material to the extruder. So we need essentially like a U-profile and a few boreholes. And now it's time for part number two. Here I decided to start with the most critical thing first, namely with the two holes, because these two holes, they attach to the printer. So here we have them and you see the one is in the center so everything is relative to the holes and now that we are already at it 
we can add another hole. This is going to be the filament hole. And you see, it's very long. And so then we can combine it into a union. And here we have our union of holes. We take this finished object and we dump it somewhere. Or alternatively, we can also make a module out of it called holes. I'm so creative. And now, because we don't invoke the module, it does nothing. And now, we can start out by building the actual construction. For this, we need three cubes. Cube 1, cube 2, cube 3. And then all we need to do is a difference operator between this guy and the holes. And we are done. And now somebody has been asking me, what can I do to make the thing parametric? So for example, I want to have a variable, whole dia. And now I said whole dia is initially 3.1. And now you see, I can put the whole dia here at the bottom. And it works. And now if I want to be stupid, I go here, I take six, and you see the holes got much bigger. And you can do this with all kinds of things. You can even put an if clause in, for example, to prevent the user from making crazily large holes. Well, and at this point, we are done. The old adage says that the proof is in the pudding. So here we take a heavy spool, we mount it, and we see the printer happily accepts it. So, this is it. I hope that you have enjoyed this little open SCAD demonstration. As always, you know, down there, like and subscribe and comment. And if you feel like buying a copy of this book, of course, I'm also very grateful. And see you next time. Bye bye.